Okay, very good morning, Thursday the 29th of April. Hope you're doing well and just going to get up to speed on what's been going on and, and lots of news to update you on because we had a batch of tech heavyweights report their earnings after market last night, i.e. Apple, Facebook in particular. Uh, and as you can see in the center charts here in the NASDAQ and the S&P on the right, we've had a continuation of a push higher seen in US index futures in that overnight session, fresh all-time highs again for likes of the S&P. We've taken out 4,200 now to the upside. This also coming in combination as well with a slightly kind of dovish short-term reaction to what the Fed said yesterday, which really was not a lot new, but a function, I guess, of some of the market's belief that perhaps they could have kind of spilled over optimism and any concerns about inflation to something a little bit more hawkish but didn't didn't materialize they kind of just rolled out their then their dovish stance as they have done in recent recurring speeches and thus um, that's also provided a bit of um, catalyst for the market movement so the dollar still a bit weaker that did propel both major currency pairs yesterday as you can see in the top left euro dollar and cable uh, just having a look at a couple of these charts then cables now got a little bit of a platform bit messy uh, late asia session just before europe came in but around that 139.50 in the future is going to be quite a key level it was a level that we ran up to um, yesterday evening found a bit of resistance but then the the kind of asia pack session just following that through to some degree uh, on that dual combination of the the dovish kind of um, main, maintaining of that stance in the Fed in combination with those good tech earnings. <coughs> uh, Samsung Electronics in South Korea, a uh, big cap firm there. They also exceeded expectations. Um, Hong Kong actually led shares higher in Asia um, with Japan shut for a market holiday. Um, otherwise, a few other things from overnight. You did have, uh, of course, Joe Biden gave his, his first speech to Congress. Um, he outlined his 1.8 trillion social support plan, package of tax cred credits, domestic priorities, partly funded, of course, as we know now, by these um, largest tax increases on the wealthy in America in decades. But market not really wrapped into that because a lot of the information that was more market sensitive we'd already known, of course, with that move last week with the capital gains tax. Um, worth noting overnight, though, did also have comments from a, a U.S. Democratic Senator Manchin. That person is one of the names that we've kind of highlighted before. And the reason for that is because um, Manchin had said that the trillion dollar proposal from Biden makes him feel uncomfortable. And of course, he's one of the key people to watch because of the wafer thin margin that the Democrats have um, having to rely on Kamala Harris as the VP to split the 50-50 vote uh, in the Senate, um, Biden, for his current proposals, would need all of them on board, uh, which is one of the key reasons of why the market's probably on the balance or of the expectation that the kind of capital gains tax numbers that we heard a week or so ago are probably unlikely to materialise to the, to the magnitude of, <coughs> excuse me, of um, the numbers we, which have initially been tabled. So that's the general vibe of things. <clears throat> There's obviously things coming out today that will also be significant. You've got the Q1 advanced GDP we'll look at in a moment. And you've also got a batch of, of more earnings in particular after market. You've got the likes of Amazon, pre-market today, McDonald's as well. So a couple of big names as well reporting. But a quick look across some of these charts and just looking at the S&P here first. Um, we've had that, that double top through this week, which... And we initially came up and tested and has now provided a bit of a on the break pullback for that kind of classic long on the push back up to the Asia pack high, which now marks the all time high at 42.03 and a quarter. A bit of short term consolidation at that point, but any further pullback uh, on any short term profit taking would be looking at that 41.92.50. So that area of previous resistance now will be an area of probably stronger support. Uh, if you start looking on the daily bars, um, for the S&P, you know, we were struggling a little bit. You can see that high that we printed back on the, the 16th of this month. That really had marked the high because we had failed to close um, on the dailies above 41.83 and a half. Um, it'd be really interesting to see where we close on the daily candle today. Can we finish above that point? If so, then I think we, we, we've probably got a, a decent floor for price here, barring anything unexpected 
for the next phase now of either push up or consolidation up and around this 4200 uh, area so again on the on the on the way back down because i know that the kind of bears get very nervous when we start to see this kind of continuation kind of low volatility environment uh, as as seen in like sort of the vix and we get this one kind of dimensional move i mean that's what i'd say a lot of this was and then we had that pullback and this is where the bears were kind of claiming victory short term that uh, the market was going to roll over and obviously it hasn't done helped by the fed now and some of these bigger earnings coming out it's just bumped us over the line again back up to the on the upside but if we ever did get to the point where we do see some more aggressive kind of pullback then there's plenty of good areas of technical um, support i would say lower down just tracking the these bigger moves to um, the upside that we have seen probably the most significant of all being around that 4000 as the last kind of line of defense um, from a percentage wise what does that look like actually if we go from where we're trading at the moment to there we talk about a five percent move which would be you know pretty big um, but just goes to show that even if we came off five percent personally i still wouldn't feel bearish <laughs> um, i don't think we are going to come off five percent anytime soon um, so i mean if you look at it in a, in a proportion of some of these other moves that we had if we go back to the february march period that was about a similar size move to what we're talking um, so definitely can happen but i think a lot of these trends will materialize so it's kind of set up as, as where we're at at the moment. Uh, T-Notes yesterday obviously um, got a bit of a boost on the back of the, the Fed. And, and so again, look, let's, let's recap exactly what the Fed said and then we'll look at some of these charts. So, so here he is, the main man, Jerome Powell. Um, he noted a strengthening economy, but basically waved off any talk of a policy shift as soon as at the moment. There were two main comments he made in the press conference that were really the market moving uh, kind of event or, or parts of that event. One was transitory rise in inflation this year would not meet standard for raising rates. And the second one is it's not time to start talking about taper. And again, we're not really expecting that for a number of weeks down the line until we get to the June meeting, which is about seven weeks away. That's where we're kind of penciling in that more kind of heated discussion about, about tapering. Um, you know, good point here. Tim and I were covering this live uh, on, the, on the live feed in the community on Amplify Live last night. And I know Tim has a kind of different take and view on what he thinks about inflation. Um, but, you know, credit to him. Uh, he had some really excellent trades yesterday. And I think the ability to be able to kind of disassociate yourself um, from, you know, your kind of view that you might have on a macro level and just trade on the basis of, the information that you're seeing and so as i say credit to him for being able to execute those trades which basically were against his view of what he thinks um, but he's just reacting to the fact that you know the information is here that the, the fed are being pretty clear here that they're not going to withdraw their support anytime soon they're not really phased about inflation they see it as transitory and so I think a lot of people were thinking like Tim and therefore the market reacted. Um, I don't think what the Fed have said is new. I don't think it's going to be long lasting in a lot of these moves that we've had. And I think that's already materializing in the yields that we're seeing, which are fading a lot of that move. I think yesterday's move was purely a function of people getting ahead of themselves, thinking that the Fed might change their language. Uh, and you know, as we've seen time and time and again, whether it be Powell, whether it be Yellen, that these, these individuals always react on the side of caution and accommodation as far as policy is concerned. So <coughs> we had that like, kind of blast higher in a 10 year. We've come up to a, a relative point here, as you can see from the, the previous support levels, the breakdown and then the retest here um, was quite nice in terms of the uh, late US session. And then we've just faded that move as yields have just grinded back up a little bit as we go into the European uh, Open. Um, gold also did get a boost because, as I said, the currency pairs were lifted by the softening greenback on the back of that uh, FOMC reaction. And so that we did manage to, well, this was the, there was twofold movement, really. You do often see this in a geographic kind of sense. It's the US initial reaction here to the Fed. And then Asia come in, we break above a relative short-term range, and then we, we snap higher. We got to R1. 
and then as I said the price is fading a little bit here so the price fade <coughs> I don't think is that surprising um, I would definitely be more mindful of, of kind of closing out any of those short-term um, kind of reaction effect from the Fed because again as I said I think it was down to the markets kind of slightly off beat with getting a bit ahead of themselves about where the Fed's heads are at it's definitely not the case that the Fed have done anything different here the Fed have just done exactly what they've said they were always going to do from the, the the number of speeches that they've been delivering before the blackout period that we've seen so there's definitely no surprises there the other chart is just oil um, we had that positive obviously bullish um, infantry data yesterday uh, which obviously helped things definitely uh, we saw a big run up in prices got up to those highs that we had back on the 20th and then saw quite a steep pullback and we're just uh, still holding a 64 handle uh, for the time being up 29 cents for the moment all right well let's have a quick run through some of these earnings i've already issued my my kind of morning notes where i go through these in all uh, in a lot more detail but just giving you the the general flavor apple aftermarket <coughs> As you can see here was up 2.34 percent in aftermarket trade uh, their revenues just smashed expectations i think as you would expect from apple as they always do 89.58 billion against 77.3 billion expected uh, mac sales and ipad sales which is something that the market was looking at particularly mac sales given this whole work from home environment um, they actually grew 70 percent uh, ipad sales actually were up nearly 80 percent um, one thing though they did warn on was that supply constraints are crimping sales. This is to do with, with chips that we're seeing and the global shortage at the moment uh, could crimp sales of iPads and Macs. Uh, the CFO did say that that could knock around three to four billion off revenue in the fiscal period of, of the third quarter. Uh, their app store revenue and licensing revenues were up um, 27%. Analysts were only expecting that to be up 17%. From a numbers point of view, that's now accounting for $16.9 billion of revenue. Uh, revenue in China was up 87%. They also boosted their quarterly dividend to 22 cents from 20 and a half cents. And they authorized a boost of $90 billion in existing buyback program. So, yeah, I mean, Apple just, uh, just getting business done, I guess, uh, in that respect. So, um, on the back of that um, alphabet story that we had with the pickup in advertising uh, that really helped um, accelerate their their revenues we saw the same from facebook revenues um, 26.17 billion expectations were for just over 23 monthly active users 2.85 billion touch more than expected they see q2 revenue growth remaining stable or modestly accelerating Facebook actually the best of the bunch. They were up over 6% after market. And a quick recap, other names, Qualcomm were up about 5.2%. Uh, again, very strong numbers. Uh, Ford, though the underperformer, um, they were down 3% or just over that uh, in aftermarket. They were citing semiconductor shortages um, and they see losing 10% of their planned second half production um, that's some of the rationale for what the weakness in their shares later on today um, there's a couple of, of key ones to look out for pre-market caterpillar which is always seen as a bit of a bellwether just generally for the perception of kind of the appetite and demand on their goods and services and machinery and so on so keep an eye out for them uh, then you've got merck mcdonald's bristol myers squib probably some of the bigger names to look out for but an aftermarket amazon's the main one in focus a uh, bit of talk on Monday at the beginning of the week about potential stock split um, as well. So something to just bear in mind. And then you've also got Twitter, Gilead, a few other names as well that will, will capture a bit of attention. Um, but otherwise, taking a look at the calendar for today, what have we got in store? You've got German unemployment rate and change coming out just before 9am. I wouldn't really see this as too much of a, of a market mover for any European-based as <coughs> asset excuse me and then you've got the german state cpis coming out throughout the morning and i'll probably put those in the same category as what i've described for the, for the german employment data i just think there's focus elsewhere and i don't think short term unless these are really spectacular uh, increases from their previous figures i don't think they're going to be market movers neither is the sentiment readings out of the eurozone at 10 they, they never really move the market 
So that really puts a lot of emphasis this afternoon on 1.30. And the reason for that is we get the first reading, first look at Q1 advanced GDP in the US. Expectations are for a further improvement uh, as the economy in the US starts to pick up and further reopening is materializing as what we've been seeing with improvements in the jobs market. So looking at a headline figure of 6.1% from previous 4.3, the range is wide. Uh, we've got 26 at the low to 10% as the most optimistic estimate on the street. Now the range is wide because like most data, ranges are naturally wider just given the fluidity of the situation at the moment. Um, hence the reason why analysts are quite off the mark in regards to say some corporate earning analysts and data expectations because of the nature of the economy is evolving quite quickly uh, at this point in time with the reopening happening. My overall perception with the GDP number um, is uh, I don't I don't think it really changes the Fed from a policy timing point of view with their tapering talk. So even if we got a number that was like seven and a half, eight and a half percent, I don't think that that really accelerates um, the the taper talk. Um, I still think that that really will materialize more in kind of June time when they have that key FMC meeting mid-month, obviously with the new projections and so on. One thing it could do though is if we get say a seven and a half percent GDP number today, that's that's a that's let's say a positive economic growth is happening faster than generally people were expecting. But given the fact that the Fed have just said that they're not inflation is transitory and they're not budging yet and it's not time to talk tapering. I think you've got to take that as just a natural positive then and, and perhaps that just pushes equities further further north um, at this point uh, would, would be quite an interesting thing to, that could materialise this afternoon I would say. So it could be that instead of good data being bad because of the nature then that that means faster tightening. I think we know the Fed's stance now, they've just been explicit yesterday. So if we have good data, it might be it's good data and the market reacts in that, that fashion, if that makes sense. Um, the other thing we've got is initial jobless claims. Uh, they are expected at 549,000. So remember last week we had 547,000, which was a very low number. Um, some of the best numbers we've seen since the initial onset of the pandemic back over a year ago. And we're expecting that number to continue to remain around those levels. So um, that in combination will come out at the same time as GDP. Um, Speaker-wise, a couple to be aware of, ECB Mr. Gwindos um, is probably a main one, but no text release, uh, nonetheless, we'll, we'll keep an eye out, 8.30. Uh, then you've got voters, uh, Fed voters speaking later as well uh, at 4 and 7 p.m. London time, respectively. Um, supply coming out of Italy for any fixed income traders, and there's a number of European um, and UK companies reporting today as well, so aside from the States, um, you do have a couple of notable names here, if I just bring it up into shot. Um, so from France, notably, you've got Total, one of the largest market cap companies in Europe. FTSE, Royal Dutch Shell, heavyweight in the FTSE 100. And then same for the DAX, you've got BASF as well today. So all could be meaningful for their respective indices that they trade in. All right, that is it. Going to leave it at that, let you guys get on with the session. And I will see you in the chat room. Thanks very much.